I'm gonna share with you the eight most common ways that content creators make money on YouTube because a lot of people think that YouTube ads and super chats and memberships and all that stuff is how people make money on YouTube, but I'm here to tell you there are actually a lot of ways that people make money. So I'm gonna tell you what each one is and I'm going to explain it to you so by the time you're finished with this video, you can walk away knowing different ways that you can start making money right away. And as we get into it, I wanna thank Uscreen for sponsoring this video. If you're not familiar with Uscreen, Uscreen is a platform that allows content creators to sell their videos online and build their own membership site with a Netflix-like look and feel. Uscreen customers are from a variety of industries and backgrounds, from fitness studios, education, news, music teachers, vloggers, kids entertainment, and anybody that wants to make money from their content, they can do it with Uscreen. As a Uscreen user, you can sell memberships for your streaming service, rent videos out, or even live stream with a paywall via their website or their own white labeled apps. Uscreen is the platform for building a membership that generates a sustainable and predictable revenue stream for content creators. To check out Uscreen for yourself, go to uscreen.tv, or of course, I've got a link down in the description below. So check out Uscreen when you're finished with this video because they even have a free trial available where you can take it for a test run. But when it comes to making money from your YouTube channel, the very first option that is a great start for content creators is affiliate marketing. If you're not familiar with affiliate marketing, affiliate marketing is where you sign up for an affiliate program and you can find affiliate programs by searching for the type of content that you make and then just putting the words affiliate program after it. And then you sign up for the affiliate programs that are a good fit for what it is that you're trying to do with your YouTube channel they would add value to your audience. And of course, it just makes sense with the type of content that you make. And then they'll give you a unique tracking ID that you put in your video description. And when you recommend that product or service and people click on that link and go make a purchase, you get a commission for sending them there through your link. A few quick tips for you if you decide to use affiliate marketing for one of the ways that you're gonna monetize your content. The first tip is make sure that the thing that you are bringing attention to is a great fit for your audience. Because if you don't, then people aren't gonna click it, nobody's gonna buy anything, and it's gonna be a waste of your time if it's not a good fit for the type of content you make. Next is make sure that you consider viewer intent. What that means is, if somebody's looking for a review video on a particular product and they hop on YouTube and they're searching for something about that product, that person knows about the product and there's a really good chance they're watching a review because they're considering making a purchase. So if you make that type of content as an affiliate marketer, you're going to get higher conversions because you're essentially hopping in between the person considering making the purchase, watching your video, and then them actually making the purchase. Another tip is if possible, if you do find things that are recurring, which means people pay for them every month, then your affiliate income can balloon relatively quickly. And the reason for that is instead of just sending one sale at a time, your recurring memberships will end up stacking up over time because the longer people stay a part of whatever it is that you're bringing to their attention, then the longer they're paying into to it, which means that instead of sending, let's say, a $10 sale one time, if that person stays a member for a whole year, then instead of $10, you're making 120. And the next tip for affiliate marketing, of course, is make sure that everything that you're recommending is stuff that you stand behind. And the reason for that is because if you're recommending things that don't work or they're garbage or whatever the thing is, then people aren't going to take your recommendations anymore. Whereas if you're recommending things and people are like, wow, this is great, and hey, they recommended this and it's also great, then they're going to keep coming back to you and they're going to end up continuing to take your recommendations, which is going to make you a lot more money long term. Next on this list is merchandise. Now, when it comes to merchandise, a lot of content creators are timid about offering merchandise because they think nobody will buy it or that it's not worth the effort. I can tell you that it is worth the effort and I can tell you that people do indeed buy merch. When it comes to merch, you can use an outlet like Spreadshop where all you have to do is have a graphic made or you can create your own graphics through a site like Canva.com and then you upload your graphics into Spreadshop and then when somebody buys whatever merch you have available with that graphic on it, then you get a commission. And when it comes to merch, a lot of content creators think that you have to be in the YouTube partner program to use it because of the list that you see underneath the videos where they're selling merch. However, you can create a store on Spreadshop, grab the link to your store, and then just drop that in your video description, let everybody know that you have a link in your description to your store. It's that easy. In fact, I've got a link to mine down there too if you wanna 
check that out. Next on the list is crowdfunding. So with crowdfunding, what you do is you set up an account at some place like Buy Me A Coffee or Ko-Fi or Patreon, and technically you can use Uscreen as a part of this as well. But you set up your account for one of these places and depending on which one you use, it's kind of like a tip jar if you're going with Buy Me A Coffee or Ko-Fi, or if you want to offer some additional content in exchange or some additional access to you or something like that, that's where you would use Patreon or Uscreen. With all of these services, with the exception of Uscreen, they are free with the exception of taking a percentage of the income generated from those particular platforms. Where with Uscreen, you pay a flat fee and you can make mountains of money and it's okay because you're still just paying that flat fee. Next on the list is digital products. So with a digital product, what that is, is that something that you would make on your computer or on your phone and then you make that available for sale somewhere online. Depending on the type of content you put out, in some cases it could be guides that you make available for sale, it could be ebooks that you make available for sale, it could be videos that you make available for sale in like a course-like format and you could put them on Uscreen as an example. And you can even get creative with it. For example, I made a digital content planner for iPads that I have available on the internet as well and people buy that. Another thing you could do on the digital product side is you can create a newsletter for your industry that people actually pay for or you can combine affiliate marketing with your newsletter and actually promote products as well as give people value through your email newsletter. The great thing about digital products is that you can create them and depending on what it is that you create, you may or may not need to ever update it again. So you can create it once and you can make money on it forever. But in some cases, of course, you will need to update it from time to time or maybe even on a regular basis. But the idea is once you create it and you get the bulk of the project done, then all you have to do is find different ways to sell it. You can do it through your YouTube channel, you can do it through advertising, you can do it in any way that you want to, but the idea is that you can just create something that is of value to other people and then you can sell it online. And of course, an easy way to sell it online is through the content that you're already making on your YouTube channel. Next on the list, we have services. So when it comes to services, this is where you have to lean on your skill set. So I know that everybody watching this, you know, everybody makes different types of content. So what you have to think about when it comes to services is you have to think about either past life experience that you have that you would be able to offer as a service, or you can think about the skills that you've developed as a content creator that you can also offer as a service as well. For example, almost everybody watching this video right now makes videos. So because of that, you're going through the process or you already have a really good understanding of the process of editing videos. Therefore, that could be a service, but you gotta make sure that your audience is a good fit for that service. However, with a lot of types of content, you can offer some type of consulting or where you can hop on calls with people and give them advice based on your experience in the industry that you're operating in. And you might be thinking to yourself, hey Nick, with the type of content that I make, there's no way that anybody would pay for any type of consulting or anything for it, but keep in mind. You might be thinking that because you already have a good understanding of what it is that you're doing. That's why you're making videos about it. But in every industry, regardless of how many veterans or knowledgeable people are in that industry, there's still new people coming into it all the time. And in that situation, people always have the choice of taking the time to learn the thing on their own or shortcutting that process by spending a little bit of money. So in that case, you can be that person that they spend that money with for the people that are willing or wanting to spend money to shortcut their learning curve. Next on the list is sponsorship. So like I mentioned before, this video is brought to you by Uscreen. So just like this video is sponsored by Uscreen, you can also have people sponsor the content that you make as well. For this, you are going to have a lot more doors open for you if you do have some type of consistent view count and your channel's heading the right way and you're building your brand and all of those types of things. But some people, depending on your business savvy and all of that, some people can get sponsorships very early in their YouTube. YouTube journey. And look, at the very least, if you're not quite there yet to where you're comfortable reaching out to a company because you're not sure of the value that you can bring to them, go ahead and start interacting with them on social media. And anytime you make a video that happens to mention their product anyway, go ahead and just tweet at them and let them know that you've made that video. Same thing with LinkedIn. Make sure that you are putting any of that content on LinkedIn as well, that you're following and connecting with all of the people that work at all the companies that you're wanting to work with in the future. And by doing this as your 
your influence grows, then you are going to be bringing that to their attention as well. And you're at least going to be on their radar when they are looking for influencers to work with. Next on the list is physical products. Now, when it comes to physical products, technically merch could fall under this, but you can also do things like write books. My friends on YouTube, they write books and people buy these all the time because they're value packed, right? They add tons of value to the people that read them. And these are physical products. So how these work is you upload your book to Amazon. And when people actually order it, then Amazon prints it and sends it out to people. So then it becomes a physical product. And of course, you can work with people to actually get these onto bookshelves as well. When it comes to physical products, you also have cool things like the Switch Pod made by Pat Flynn or any other thing that you can possibly think of. But keep in mind with all of these types of things, with the exception of the Amazon and the merch, they will cost money. I mean, you can't just upload this to the internet and then they print it when somebody needs it. We're not quite there yet, but hopefully we'll be there soon. But the idea with physical products is they are tangible things that people can actually hold in their hands. And one other option that you would have as well when it comes to physical products, if you would like, is you could look into white labeling, which is where you take another product, you put your brand name on it, and then you would be able to sell it through your YouTube channel that way. And then there's content licensing. So when it comes to content licensing, this is one people don't usually talk about a lot when it comes to YouTube content creators, but depending on the type of content that you make, it's also possible that people will pay you to license your content. What that means is that they will give you a certain amount of money in order to be able to use your content in places like TV shows, in commercials, in anything that people need your type of content for. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, this is all great, but how do I come up with ideas on things that would actually work for the type of content that I make? I made a video showing you how to start a channel and monetize that YouTube channel. And in that video, we talk about researching other people in the type of content that you make to uncover exactly what it is that they are going to monetize so you can use proof of concept to see exactly what's working for your type of content. Click into that video right here and I will see you over there. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you over there.